It is not enough to stop here. After finding the relevant research uh, papers, I have to look under the methodology to assess and judge and critically appraise the validity, validity the reliability and applicability of uh, this methodology used. So critical appraisal is necessary and is this the fourth step in the process of EBM uh, tackling about the question. So I don't stop at just getting the literature and reading it. I have to critically appraise what's in hand. CASP appraisal checklist and critically appraising articles by category by Duke University are other references to resort to and when you want to do critical appraisal of the paper in hand. Finally, evaluate the whole process. Apply the results to your patient. Was it applicable to your patient? Does it serve to answer his concern and his question? After we have learned that we have to break down the clinical question into the PICO, look up the PICOs, and map the question type with this best study design. And understanding that EBM has given us a good start, but much remains to be done. Clinical practices is an inherently uncertain activity. Although EBM cannot remove this uncertainty, it can at least help us reduce it. It is recommended that, hopefully, education of the future physicians will enhance their ability to effectively search the medical literature in a timely manner and hence be efficient EBM clinical question uh, searchers and critically appraise the information out there and not just believe everything one sees fake and not just fake but also the peer-reviewed journal have to be critically appraised for the validity, reliability, and applicability. Some final words on EBM. EBM builds and reinforces, but never replaces the clinical judgment or experience. No matter how good the evidence is, evidence does not make decisions. People do. But perhaps, with the evidence in hand, some future decisions might be just a little more informed. Still confused? More on the live session on June 12th.